to our Wednesday workshops. We are here kicking it off with you today, and we are so excited that you joined us for a new season of Wednesday workshops with Rebuild. Before we kick this off, we are going to ask our subject matter expert for today, Maria Politano, to open us in prayer. Maria, can you please pray for us? Sure. Thanks, Melissa. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, we come before you with hearts full of gratitude for the opportunity to gather as your servants from around the world, united by a common desire to build up your church. We thank you for the leaders here today who have answered the call to make their parishes places of worship, love, and community. As we go through this workshop today, we ask for your guidance and wisdom. Please send the Holy Spirit to guide our discussions. Grant us the creativity to inspire others, the humility to serve, and the perseverance to build a volunteer army that serves with love, compassion, and dedication. May our discussions today not only help us strengthen our parishes, but also deepen our own faith and commitment to you. Help us to see every volunteer as a precious gift and to lead them with kindness, respect, and encouragement. As we embark on this journey today, we also pause to remember the anniversary of 9-11. We honor the memories of those who lost their lives and pray for the families and friends who continue to mourn that loss. Lord, grant them comfort and peace that surpasses all understanding. Please bless our time together today. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the name Amen. of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much, Maria. That was beautiful. Well, if this is your first time here, welcome. And if you've been here with us before, welcome back. We know it has been a few months since we took a break for summer, but we are excited that you're here. So let's do some introductions. So first, we want to hear from you. We would love you to please drop in the chat your name, what parish you're from, and where your parish is. We love that we get parishes from all over the United States, but not just that, from all over the world. So let us know where in the world you're joining us from today. And if we've never met, my name is Melissa and I'm a part of the Rebuilt team. And I'm so grateful that I get to be here with you on these workshops each week. So let's get some things started. Before we dive into the content, We've got some exciting things to share with you, and that chat is going to be very busy today, so keep that open because Chrissy is going to be dropping all sorts of links with some exciting information. So the first piece of information, I can't believe I get to be the one to tell you this. I'm really excited about it, but it is about the biggest Rebuilt celebration of the year, and that is the Rebuilt Conference. So save the date right now for June 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. So join us for our Sunday experience. That is June 1st. And if you've never been to Nativity and you want to see what all of the fuss is all about, what all the hype is all about, you're going to want to come on that Sunday. We're going to have some tours and some exclusive opportunities that will only be available on that Sunday. The conference itself starts at 2 p.m. on Monday and ends at 5 on Tuesday. And I've got to tell you, we are planning some impactful breakout sessions, worship, and speakers. So plan on coming and getting your cup filled up. You are going to leave inspired and ready to take action to make your vision for your parish a reality. And do you want to hear the theme for this? Let's get a little drum roll going. So the theme for this year's workshop is Can You Imagine? And it's going to be amazing. So if you're not on our insiders list yet, Chrissy is gonna be dropping that link in the chat for you. Go ahead, take a, take a quick click on that link and pop in your information so that you can be a part of that insiders list. So you can be the first to know when early bird registration starts and what our conference topics are going to be and all of that exciting information. So go ahead right now, click that, and then pop it into the chat and let us know 
once you've gotten on the list. So maybe just pop in there on the list or I'm an insider so that we can celebrate you and get excited that you'll be there. Okay. Oh, we've got people already on the list. I love it. Okay. Next thing that I'm so excited to share with you and FYI, if you're new to workshops, we don't always have so many exciting things to tell you at the very beginning. This will probably be one of the only times we take time to, to chat through some of these exciting announcements. Um, so the next thing I want to share with you is our podcast. So I want to know if you have listened to our newly updated podcast yet, can you pop that in the chat and let us know that you've listened? Because we want to know who is listening out there. Oh, Casey says, great podcast. Thank you. Okay. Oh, we've got people listening. This is exciting. So if you haven't, Chrissy is going to pop a link into the chat now to the podcast. Another way you can find it is to pop it into your phone, into your favorite podcast app and look for Rebuilt Parish Podcast and hit subscribe. And if you are subscribed already, drop it in and let us know. If not, go ahead and click on one of those links and hit subscribe. You may not know that we are also on YouTube. So if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you're not only going to get those updates as soon as the podcast drops every week, but you're going to get our workshop replays there as well. So let's just say maybe you're new to pod or maybe you're new to the workshops. Don't worry, you can go back and watch any of last year's workshops right on our workshop playlist. So we want to make sure that all of you are getting access to all of that. Um, so make sure, though, to share these links with your teams and with your neighboring parishes, because we want to make sure that everyone you know can be empowered by these strategies, success stories, and ideas that we're sharing on these each week. So here's how it works. Every month, we pick a topic and we dive into it. So this month, for example, we are keeping with our theme of ministry, but you're going to get to hear so much more on the podcast. New episodes drop every Thursday with every podcast series. We give you a tool to help you dig in and rebuild your parish. So if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button now so you never miss an episode. And I have one more thing to ask. Do you want to help make disciples all over the world? Well, here's one way you can help to do that. If you've listened to the podcast or if you haven't yet, once you do, could you please leave us a review? When you do that, it helps other parish leaders find our podcast too, so that they can also help make disciples. Okay, well, that's what I've got for announcements for you today. Now let's start talking about the workshop. So if you've been with us before, I think you might know what question I'm going to ask. Ready? Do you have your workshop worksheet printed? Is it with you ready to go? So if you were here with us last year, you've got a whole binder full of worksheets from every week. If you're brand new, just so you know, you're going to get a new one of these every week. And here's what's so great about them. The front side, you can use to take notes, jot down any questions you have, and fill in how your parish can adopt the strategies that we're talking about. And then if you're sticking around for the discussion groups, you can get ready to talk through some of these ideas that you're learning about um, with some other parishes that are in your group. And the one thing we always ask is that you commit to at least one action step to move the needle in your parish. And as always, if you've got any questions about anything we're talking about, pop those into the chat at any time and we will do our best to address every question or as many questions as we can before we break out into discussion groups. And if you're new here, you might be saying, Melissa, what the heck is a discussion group? I'm brand new, I've never been here before. Well, let me tell you, a discussion group is a small group of parish leaders along with at least one rebuilt minister that meets during the second half of this workshop. So in this group, you'll introduce yourself in the chat and you'll discuss the content from today's workshop and chat through some of those discussion questions that are on the back of your worksheet. Now, you might wanna know, do I have to stay for the discussion groups? Nope, 
These are completely optional, but I want to share with you the benefits of sticking around for the discussion groups. So from working in a parish, I know, and you all know, that parish work can sometimes feel difficult or lonely, especially when you're working on parish renewal and trying to make positive change happen. These groups give you the chance to connect with other parish leaders who are walking this walk with you. And we've got a rebuilt minister in each one of these to help facilitate that conversation so that everyone has an opportunity to talk. So this week, we're beginning the series all about recruiting, or as Tom Corcoran would ask me to tell you, attracting volunteer ministers. We've brought in a subject matter expert that's not only part of the rebuilt team, but she's also a key member of the ministry team at Nativity as well. And normally right about now, I bring Father Michael in and ask him a couple of questions, but unfortunately he's in a meeting today that we couldn't bring him out of. But because we've got the amazing Maria Politano here who has been at Nativity for 29 years, if I'm not mistaken, we can ask her some of these questions. So welcome, Maria, and thank you for joining us today. Melissa, thank you so much. I'm so excited. I'm looking at the chat at where all these people are from, and it's just amazing. I'm so excited to be here with everyone. It's so exciting. There's so many people here today, too. I love seeing the workshops this full, especially, I don't know about you, but I missed these. I, I missed mean, these, I too. Yeah, this is a great everything. opening. <laughs> So before we dive into the content, Maria, can you tell us a little bit about your role at Rebuilt and your role at Nativity? Yeah, sure, Melissa. So at Rebuilt, I'm a lead coach. So uh, that means that I coach parishes, partner parishes, and I also do some one-on-one -on -one coaching with different people at parishes. So that's really exciting. I'm also an instructor for Rebuilt. So I teach some of our courses such as uh, our Leadership Strategies course and our Foundations Equip course. So really, really enjoy um, doing those things. And then at Nativity, I'm the co-lead for our Greeter Ministry, which is just a really big passion of mine. I absolutely love doing that and being there on the weekends and seeing all the greeters and, and helping them to grow. So it's just really been a great time. That is amazing. Now, did I get it right? Has it been 29 years that you've been at Nativity? It has been 29 years. Yes, it has. Okay. So here's a question that I normally would ask Father Michael, but I'm going to ask you because that's even before Father Michael's time there, right? It is. So can you share with us a bit about what that, that volunteer culture was like when you first got there? Yeah. So I will just say it's sort of, it was sort of unnoticeable. There were ushers primarily who did the collections and maybe told you when to come up for communion. And then there were Eucharistic ministers. And honestly, that's all I really remember from back then. I don't particularly re remember getting to know any of them or uh, necessarily feeling like it was hospitable or not. Um, that's really all that I remember. So that's telling right there that you can only remember two ministries mm -hmm. and neither one of them really stood out. Ministry wasn't really noticeable. So if this is where your parish is starting from, please be inspired to know that it's okay if that's where you're starting. Everyone has that starting point. So Maria, do you remember when you started getting involved in ministry? It's been about almost 12 years ago now when I was inspired actually by a message from the from the homily um, to get in, to get into uh, ministry and learned about some different ministries and eventually settled on greeting. Oh, I think I think she just gave us a clue to one of those three key strategies for today too. So you heard the message coming from the homily. Mm -hmm. Now, which which volunteer area, which ministry did you join? So I joined the greeters, but I actually tried out. We had at the time, uh, our welcome desk was an information desk back then. I actually also tried that out at the time. We had, a, we had a program where you could try different ministries before you picked one. Oh, I love that idea. So you started out with just two ministries that you could recognize. Then things kind of changed a little bit where more volunteer ministries were being introduced. You could try some out. So from 29 years ago to today, how many volunteer ministers are at Nativity right now? So Nativity currently has 1,300 active volunteer ministers. 
And that does not include our small group leaders or our missions folks. That's just the active volunteers on campus. Yes is incredible 1300 so again i want everyone here to be inspired to know that you can start with the bare minimum and it is possible to make those moves so that's amazing now let's talk about so 1300 people why is it so impor important to build a volunteer army like that an army of volunteers to to help serve in the parish why is that important yeah, so it's a good question, right? And a lot of our parishes here probably won't, will understand this. If you have a small staff, building a volunteer army can help supplement what you don't have on your staff. Um, many parishes have a small staff, so this would really help them be able to fill some of those gaps that they have and take some of the burden off of some of the staff. It's also part of the discipleship path. So it's really helping people to grow deeper in their faith. I know my faith grew deeper when I joined ministry. It's amazing how much that can help you grow deeper. It's also part of our mission is to make disciples that help make other disciples. So by serving, you can help make other disciples and help others grow in their faith. And then we just want to remember too, Jesus came to serve, not to be served. So we really just want to follow in his footsteps. So this is another reason why sort of building that volunteer army is really important. For sure. And I know that there's so many parishes that are here today or watching on the replay that have a small staff. And so this can be encouraging to them that they don't have to do it all. In fact, they can't do it all. This is how we burn out in parish life by not having enough volunteer ministers to help serve. So I hope that this is inspiring to you as you're hearing this. Now, is every parish out there going to get 1,300? Well, no, it depends on your parish size, right, Maria? Right, exactly. It's really going to depend on how many people you have, but you could still get a large percentage of people Absolutely. to step into that role. Absolutely. So, Maria, we've got three key strategies today. Can you walk us through that first strategy? Yeah, so the first strategy is to actually identify who those strongest leaders are. That's really so, going to be important to you to sort of identify who, who you want to tap for leadership. And why? Why is it important to know who our leaders are? So anytime you want to kick off something new, right? If you want to kick off, say, hospitality or a culture change in your parish, it's really important to find some people who can help you do that. Some people who are already um, in agreement with what you want to do, right? They understand the why and they understand what the next step should be and they can help you create that really great weekend experience. And then they can also help you demonstrate what you're trying to achieve. So if you want to set a tone, this, they're the ones that are gonna help you set that. But the other great thing about that is they can also help you sustain those ministries. So you can create leaders for those ministries. If you can identify who those leaders are, they can be the ones that help then grow the ministries. I love that. And we talk about building layers of leaders all the time. And that's so important, especially in these volunteer ministries. Now, Marie, I want to know, how do I find these leaders? How are you identifying who the, your strong leaders are? Yeah. So Melissa, guess what? They're already in the pews, right? It's a matter of just getting to know them, getting to know the people who are there on the weekends. This is why it's so important for staff to be at the church on the weekend and getting to know people who are coming to church, building a relationship with them. So once you're able to do that, you're going to observe their behavior and you're going to be able to recognize who those leaders are. You're going to know by how they already act and what they already do and say. So it's going to be much easier for you to identify them. So where are you finding them though? So like, that's what I, so they're in the pews. But where specifically can our parish leaders find them? So let's just say they start working on the weekends now. Where where do they look? Yeah, so Melissa, they can look in, well, first of all, other ministries. Sometimes people from one can move from one ministry to another, or sometimes they'll even add a ministry. Um, you can also observe them at parish functions and social functions at the parish. You can also get them from small groups. Small groups in my small group, there were two of us that used to come to our small group meetings each week, and we would always tell stories about something that happened on the weekend. We were both serving in ministry, and we always had a great story about how someone was impacted. 
it inspired the rest of our small group to join that ministry. Uh, they might hear a message from the homily, as I said, inspired me. They might hear a message in the homily that inspires them, and they might identify themselves and approach you. But you're going to be able to observe behaviors in just the natural course of things going on in your parish. That's so good. And Marie, I want to make it clear, we're not stealing people from other ministries, right? It's Right. Okay. So I don't want people to get nervous, like, oh, but I have a really good, strong ministry. I don't want people to steal. We're not encouraging that. We're we're encouraging finding people's giftings and talents. And if they have those leadership skills, helping to finesse those. And if it means adding a ministry or perhaps just shifting gears, that's what we're doing here, right? Yes, exactly. And, okay. and many times it's just adding a ministry. Um, there's a lot of ministries that can be compatible, right? I'm a Eucharistic minister and a greeter, so I can do both of those at the same mass even. Okay. Okay. So let, that takes the scary out of it for some people who are, are a little panicked that maybe we're encouraging to take from other ministries. So, okay. Thank you for clarifying that one. Now, can you start talking to us about that second strategy? So the second strategy is really word of mouth. This is the direct ask, inviting someone into ministry. Okay, so why is it important to have this direct ask? Why, why is it important? So for one thing, they may not realize that you need the help. So if you pull up, for example, to Nativity this weekend, you're going to see a lot of greeters. And you're going to say, well, they don't need any more greeters. They have plenty. But it isn't really true, right? Scheduling, we want to be able to have people uh, to fill all of our mass times and all of our weekends. So we really do need more people. So inviting them into it gives them the opportunity to know that you actually need the help. Uh, and it, sometimes they may not even know it may be something behind the scenes and they don't know that you need help in that space. So sometimes it's just waiting for that. Sometimes they're just waiting for a sign. How many times have someone been invited to ministry and said, oh, I was thinking about it, but now that you've asked, I'm going to take that next step, right? So they may just need that little push um, and that sign that it's time for them to get involved. I'm coaching a parish right now. I'll just give you an example of how powerful this ask can be. This parish, they had a staff offsite, and one of the topics at their staff offsite was how can we identify the leaders, vol potential volunteer leaders in our parish, and who might some of those people be? And then they practiced making the ask. They did role play at their offsite, practicing making the ask. Two of their staff were so inspired, they went out and called four people to join their ministry, and all four said yes. Like oh that God. quickly, that can happen. So yeah, just really powerful, that ask. And 100%. it's an honor to be asked. Yes. And I love that they got that 100% ask rate right there. If you right. don't ask, the answer is always going to be no, right? Absolutely. I, Maria, I think that's such a great idea to practice that because we know that sometimes it doesn't come naturally for, for some leaders to just ask people. Some people are a little more introverted and it might be difficult for them. But role-playing that with your team can make that big impact and can give someone the confidence to make that ask. Absolutely. When it comes to making the ask, can you tell us a little bit more about how you do this and who can and should be doing this? Yeah, so who can do it? First of all, it could be anyone, right? It can be staff. It can be your current ministry leaders. It can be other ministers inviting a friend to join them. It could be in your small groups, like I explained about my small group, right? Anyone can make that ask and anyone can invite them in. And, and the invite can take different forms because of that. But how might you go about asking them? Well, first of all, remember that it's an honor to be invited. So if you make a personal invitation, they're going to know you have the need. They're going to feel like they're valued, especially if you tell them why you're asking them. You know, tell them a little bit about, you know, if I'm, if I'm inviting a greeter, someone to be a greeter, I might say how I've observed them being already so welcoming, right? And so they would make such a great greeter. Uh, if I'm inviting someone in the greeter ministry to step into a leadership role, I would tell them that I've observed them being a leader and I thought maybe they might want to take this next step. So just really kind of telling them that. And then if you also have current ministers, 
who are talking about serving and loving serving and what they're getting out of it and how they're growing and how they're enjoying it, that's also going to help create some momentum for people to want to be part of that, which is what exactly happened in my small group. Yeah. I, I love Maria, what you said there. And I just want to highlight this a second where you share what you saw in them, or you encourage that leader to share what they saw in that person, because think about how that makes them feel. That's that puts them in touch and it shows that you know them and you see them and you care about them too. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and just that, you know, they feel special, right? They feel special yes. when you do that. Yes. Okay. We teased this one out already, Maria, but could you please share that third strategy that we're talking about today? Absolutely. And that's from the pulpit. You probably have all already guessed that. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us why this one is so important. Yeah. So this is really important, right? You're laying the groundwork. We, we like to say you're preparing their hearts and minds for the next thing, right? You're connecting it to the discipleship path and doing that from the pulpit is really powerful. And then you want to share with them the why. Why should they be serving? They may not recognize it as a discipleship step on all on their own. So you're helping them to realize that by taking that step, they're growing deeper in their faith. They may not see it as that. So you want to really help them make that connection and sort of understand what it's doing for them as well as for the as well as for the wider community. That's so good. And we know that whatever comes from the pulpit is going to be weighed heavily on the minds and hearts of those in the pews. So if you've got the pastor up there talking about just how important it is to be serving, that's something that they're going to think about. That's a little bit different. And Maria, I think it's so wise that you share this multifaceted invitation approach where you're asking directly, you're asking from the pulpit, you're encouraging leadership to get involved. I think all of this is so important because you're you're kind of covering all of your bases to help you build up this big team of volunteer ministers. That's amazing. And there's a lot of gifts and talents in your pews, right? So if you have a need for something, you may already have someone there that can help with that thing and you, you just haven't identified them yet. Yes, for sure. Well, Maria, thank you so much. These strategies were great. And I hope everyone jotted down some great things. We do have a few questions in here. Um, so I'm going to ask you a couple of them. So that way we have time to let everybody get into their discussion groups in a little bit. Um, so Maria, I think we kind of probably thought this, we might get this one. 1,300 volunteers versus how many people on a typical weekend? So how many people do you typically get at Nativity on the weekends? How many people attend Mass on the weekends? Um, I believe last weekend, maybe we had about, hmm, I feel like I saw that number and I'm trying to remember. It's probably between 2,500 and 3,000 people on a weekend that come to okay. Mass right okay. now. So the other question here, um, a lot of that is, what percentage of volunteers is that in the parish? So Maria, do we know about how many registered people we've got at Nativity? This is a good Brandon question. If Brandon this is a good Brandon question, yeah. I, um, I'm, I'm not sure of the number myself, but I think it's, you know, 4,500 maybe families, um, something around that. So but we can definitely get those answers. Brandon tracks it all. <laughs> yes, he's, he's good. Oh, Tracy's oh, here. Tracy, Tracy says about 25%. And Tracy, Tracy knows. <laughs> and Tracy knows. Yes. And side note, Tracy knows so much. She's in the podcast tomorrow. So if you subscribe, you're going to get to hear a ton from Tracy tomorrow. So, okay. We have another question here for you, Maria. How do you define a volunteer minister and active status? So active status, well, so we have all of our volunteer ministers go through a clearance process. Your diocese probably has a similar process. So we define an active volunteer as someone who has actively served in the last 12 months. So if we have, we have plenty of people who are cleared, but maybe not still currently serving, or maybe taking a break from serving, or maybe they only serve at Christmas and so we consider an active volunteer, someone who has actively been serving in the last 12 months. 
Okay, that is helpful. Thank you. All right, we've got one more question that we've got time for today. So, and this is from James. James says, so you of course have several masses. Have you tried a greeter team leader for each mass to implement the strategies? Oh, I love this yeah. question because we do. So uh, yeah, so we have co-leads for the greeter ministry, but at every mass we have what we call a shift director. So there is a leader for every mass and we schedule them just like we do the greeters. So we have a pool of shift directors for each mass. We probably have about five different people who are a shift director for each of our masses. And so one of them gets scheduled each week and then they go to the huddle beforehand and they sort of give the instructions if anything's changed that week. They sort of make sure all the greeters know their role based on the position that they're in. So yeah, it's a really great leadership team that we have that we've built because of that. Thank so great you. question and a great idea to have someone to do that for you. Absolutely. And we talk about those layers of leaders and that's where it is so important. Um, having the co-leads and then the shift leaders and that's huge. And in fact, Tracy talks a little bit about that as well in the podcast. Um, all right, we're unfortunately about out of time for questions. So if you asked us a question, don't worry, we will address it this season of the series of the workshop. Maria, do you have any final thoughts for us on um, recruiting volunteer ministers before we break into our discussion groups? Yeah, the only thing I would say is don't be afraid to try. Don't be afraid to make that ask. A lot of people sort of hesitate and they don't wanna maybe make that ask, but I think you'll be surprised at the results. So that would be my best advice is give it a try and make that ask of someone and see what happens. Amazing. Well, Maria, thank you so much for everything today. We appreciate you and we will see you very soon. And now everyone, we're about to break into our discussion groups and we're gonna talk about recruiting volunteer ministers even further. So while you're in this group, go ahead and fill out anything in your worksheet that you haven't completed yet and share your results with the other leaders in your group. We know that having a supportive community is so important. And the great thing about these small discussion groups is that you get to learn and connect with other leaders. And if you're catching us on the replay, we hope you're able to join us live next week. And if you're joining us live this week and about to go in discussion groups, just a reminder, you can share that replay and we will see you here right after discussion groups. All right, see you all soon.